Hey there, it's Anonymous T, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we're talking Love and Marriage Huntsville. Y'all know why y'all here. Uh, today I'm going to try to give you a summary of some things that took place in Sunny's nearly four-hour live, y'all, and um, before Bedside Baptist begins but nonetheless you guys it, it was a lot it, it was a lot you know and um you know a few things that i picked up on so i uh, as you guys know i did a video that moses called in um he called in a second time as well um i know some of you in the comments were asking why didn't sunny mute the live or whatever um but it seemed like she's still getting acclimated to going live and, and all of these things, or maybe she wanted the fans to hear Moses's voice. I don't know. Uh, she, uh, kind of reiterated some of the things that she said in a previous live before. So I don't know if that was to kind of set the scene or tell people who maybe didn't know or forgot. I don't know. I don't know, but basically reiterated that, you know, I, th this issue with uh, Destiny has been long going, uh, you know, how she got in trouble for, uh, you know, again, going live that last time, the, the day of, uh, they basically tried to tell her like, hey, it, it's not a good look for you to go live, essentially. And then she said somehow Destiny saw that I... Uh, you know, when Destiny was doing all of those podcasts and, you know, and then they had the back and forth on social media and Sunny finally said, well, hey, you know, if you stop, if you don't stop, I'm going to, you know, tell the real reason why your ex-husband divorced you after a couple of weeks. And then I guess Destiny ran to the principal's office over that and got scared or whatever. And then Destiny freaked out and told some of the female cast members when Sunny posted a picture of Mari and, and there was nothing, um, else associated with uh she just immediately assumed that the sub was about her immediately assumed and you know i guess contacted some of the female cast members from love and marriage huntsville saying that sunny was talking bad about her son and all of these things and, and sunny's like i didn't even say any of that if i you know if you feel so strongly and you're triggered that easily uh you know why would you feel a certain type of way so, uh, then, uh, Sunny wanted to reread a few of the text messages because she said in regards to that scene from the girls trip last night, uh, essentially nobody ever wanted to, and the previous episode before a uh, hiatus too, the regarding the text messages, nobody ever actually asked destiny to look at her phone and to actually read like what the text messages ac actually said they just basically took destiny's word for it that this was the issue and you know she reread the text messages that didn't say baby i miss you or baby i love you or anything like that also she wanted to kind of clarify you know how a lot of these scenes were cut and how destiny was basically trying to be on some fighting stuff when things did not go her way or when certain questions that are asked to her that exposes her she tries to have like a tv moment as a deflection and you know she said essentially you know and, and i figured this confirm that you know destiny obviously she said that her background with destiny was obviously when she was her producer but she started out of course being tiffany's producer first but in the two months she worked with destiny destiny's whole thing was all about trying to expose mel always talking bad about mel basically it sounded like she regurgitated a lot of the lies that martel spread uh which was trying to allege people that mel had sex with trying to make all of these allegations about who mel is as a person and, and blah -de blah -de blah uh they're also apparently allegedly 
was at least a couple of occasions, and we know about the one occasion of the potential ambush uh, from this season because basically Mel kind of reiterated to that to us that um, when she said that she canceled her Super Bowl engagements because she had to work, she had to do some filming until she found out the filming was going to be an ambush. So apparently, in addition to this, as well as the Madani re 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 reopening, the, there is a group of women, right? And allegedly, I don't know if it's the same woman or not um, that Destiny was hanging out with in, Ale in um, Atlanta and allegedly, you know, had that uh, property in the same name as Martel. But basically, there were supposed to be this group of women that were supposed to ambush Mel and, you know, make all these accusations of all of these things that she did. And if she hooked up with these men and this and that basically confirmed what we knew from the Madani re 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 reopening that on Letitia's mom's phone was a picture that we've seen of course I uh, you know Marceau's brother posts about the you know false allegation about the paternity of the youngest child and having a picture of some attorney some random dude trying to make it seem like that was the truth and Sunny also confirmed you know Letitia's mom you know that particular day really just wanted to you know get into you know a knuck if you buck situation with Mel uh, no matter what and, and was putting 20 on 10 also said that her relationship with the cast back then when she was a producer she got along with everybody however now she basically said that she's you know cool with everyone but as far as closeness with everyone who she can talk to personally outside of the show and have like an actual developing friendship now after all of the chaos that destiny has caused trying to turn the cast against her is she's essentially you know cool with mel obviously and talks to her and things and she also said the male cast member, somebody had guessed Marceau, and she said that that was correct, that her and Marceau, you know, just always had a good relationship, and they bonded over real estate and, and some other things, so it's just easy to talk to him. She reiterated in what she said previously about, um, you know, anytime she does talk to Martel, she tries to hold him accountable about how he treated Mel and all of these issues. And he tries to reiterate and deflect and try to, you know, spin it that Mel did this or Mel did that or Mel wasn't contributing this for a year. Um, so, so I had to do me and you know, Sunny basically said that, you know, Martel has a hard time hearing, you know, how he is wrong in a situation. And a lot of people don't hold him accountable. A lot of people allow him to get away with the foolishness. And the irony in this is it sounds like Destiny basically implemented the same strategy as Martel in trying to turn the cast against Mel and in trying to turn the cast against Sunny. And also, you know, Know, the confirmation about you know some of the cast liking the pictures of Sonny and Moses getting engaged and getting married and then once Sonny was on the show uh basically unliked those posts so it was interesting because basically Sonny said that Destiny knew from the start that Sonny and Moses were going to be on the show that apparently, allegedly, Destiny was trying to find a way for quite some time to get back on this show. And I guess Carlos King confirmed in his previous interview with DJ Richie Sky that, you know, he asked if she was comfortable with Sonny and Moses uh, coming on to Love and Marriage Huntsville. And Sonny essentially said that until destiny could guarantee that this was going to be like some type of legitimate storyline that she could use uh she was not secure to get back on the show until uh you know she could secure this sunny and moses thing that if sunny and moses were not on this show that destiny would not be back is what she's saying and she said that nobody knew that Sonny and Moses were going to be on the show with the exception obviously of production and uh Destiny and then they didn't find out last minute that they were officially going to be on the show and officially be on that podcast so 
The reason this is interesting is because Destiny has presented this on camera persona that she's so shocked to see Sonny and Moses, that she's so shocked that they would have the audacity to be in Huntsville and, you know, try to, you know, take her friends away and try to hang out with her and try to do X, Y, and Z. Meanwhile, she knew behind the scenes the entire time that they were going to be on the program. Program. Also, Sunny wanted to clarify, you know, Stormy's comments on the reality with the King Live Huntsville edition episode in which, you know, Stormy said basically she felt away now about Sunny because Destiny told her that Sunny was bashing her behind her back and, you know, basically said Stormy's getting played, Stormy's getting used and, you know, Destiny has a way of manipulating conversations, manipulating interactions and withholds the fact of how messy and two-faced that she is behind people's backs but you know the moment that you fall out with her she tries to basically spin any type of gossip or anything that took place as you were the culprit that said all of these things and destiny was sitting there in silence and basically said yes she talked about stormy's appearance or whatever in regards to the ratio between like her nose and, and her face and all of these things but she still said that stormy was a pretty girl and that stormy was a hustler and, and all of these things and she said that destiny is the main one who just continued to make just disparaging insults about stormy about stormy's looks and, and all of these things you guys so but presented it to stormy as if it was sunny that said all of this and i thought stormy you know would have better discernment to like if somebody tells you hey so and so is talking about you or so and so said this about you that you would go directly to the source to get confirmation but nonetheless when you are trying to both bond over you know some tomfoolery over your mutual hatred number one over mel i guess it's pretty easy to try to run the same type of script and the same type of strategy uh when it pertains to sunny and like Mel said, also Sunny said as well, that even during that time that Destiny was bent on bashing Stormy, that she was still trying to push for a Stormy and Destiny friendship because she felt as though a lot of their qualities are very similar and how they behave and, and all of these things and that they would actually make a really good friendship. Uh, it's just ironic now because the friendship just basically seems off of, you know, mutual hatred of people and so then uh she went into as well you know kind of the fallout co confirmed of course about mel hearing that you know destiny was bashing her behind her back and and the fallout with you know mel and tisha and destiny getting in the middle of all of that and it, it just sounds like you know these people it, it just, it sounds, you know, what De Sunny was describing, it just sounds like middle school, high school clique, we're the cool kids, we're going to be the ones that gossips about everybody, talks bad about everybody, and if you're not in our circle, you know, you know, it sucks to be you, basically. But the irony is, is that it's actually Mel that's the cool kid. It's actually Mel that's the star of the show. But these people, you know, have convinced themselves that they can try to overthrow Mel off the show and that they could try to turn people against Mel off the show. But people have realized that that strategy is not working. I'm, I'm hoping people realize by now, and maybe Sunny kind of implied this at the reunion, that... A lot of Destiny's lies and things, you know, are panning out the same way that Martell's lies are. And it sounds like that Destiny acted like a fool in this reunion and trying to cut up and trying to have these TV moments. And basically, it probably had some people looking at her sideways. So, very interesting. But... I don't, I don't understand, though, why people wouldn't fact-check gossip, especially in this reality TV space where the purpose is to try to set you up and set up certain scenes to cause conflict and cause drama. Why wouldn't the first thing be to try to verify 
if something is a fact or not. Uh, and so, so that was kind of the gist of everything. I uh, basically said that, you know, um, you know, confirmed a couple of times, obviously that Moses is in jail confirmed, you know, wanted people, you know, to donate and contribute. She said she's got bills to pay now that are, that her husband's locked up or whatever. And it's going to be away for a while. A lot of people uh, called in to pray over Sonny and Moses's marriage and basically was telling Sonny she doesn't have to explain herself because there was a few people that got on there that I guess was trying to get Sonny together and trying to drag Sonny. And then there were a few people that were trying to make, uh, you know, the millimeters an issue and the millimeters a thing. But it, it just didn't make any sense. And um, then there were a few content creators that were on there, uh, both in the chat as well as got brought up to be a part of the panel and that is when things just took a, a, a crazy turn it first started with Letitia's mom in the chat basically trying to call Sonny a liar and all of these things but wouldn't elaborate on what Sonny was lying about and then a content creator who's very close to Letitia's mom. Um, and I'm not going to say the names of the content creators, but nonetheless, uh, she went up there and I guess was trying to speak on, you know, Letitia's mom's behalf or on behalf of what she's heard about Sunny and all of these things. And, um, and it was just, it got really wild, right? Uh, basically trying to say and insinuate that Sunny had been Con conspiring with LeBaric and had been at his restaurant and an interact and has been talking to him behind the scenes. Uh, apparently, I don't know if this came directly from Destiny or, or where this even came from because I've never even heard this. And Sunny said she has not ever been to LeBaric's restaurant, uh, but she may end up going or may go in the future. She also said as well that uh, she has not been conspiring with LeBaric. And basically, I think she said that he contacted her for the first time towards the end of October, uh, sent her a, a DM a few days ago, right? Uh, because it would have been around the end of October that this happened. But she said outside of that, there there, there hasn't been this like long thing of her and um LeBaric conspiring together so it just sounded like there were just some things that I don't know if this came verbatim from Destiny or how this came about or if these were things Letitia's mom said I don't know but it, it was just weird a lot of the questions and then uh Sunny I guess recalled the this particular content creator I guess made some comments about uh Sunny and her dog and accused her of being involved in bestiality and that her dog wants to, you know, lick her or, or something. And, um, it, it just, it, it was a lot. It, it was a lot, you guys. If you guys have time to just even listen to that segment, it was just appalling. Um, and the beginning of it, it just already started off on a bad foot of, you know, the the the, the way things were, were and were not greetings. And, and then there was another, uh, you know, user on there that wanted to get this content creator in particular together because uh, there's no love loss there. And, and it just, it, it was a lot, you guys. It was a lot. Which I think is why it resulted in a lot of people that called in after, uh, you know, really just trying to send positive vibes to Sunny. Uh, Sunny also reiterated, and she said this a few times as well, that, you know, her purpose on the show is hopefully going to be explained more. She said she she said from her producer perspective, she understands why not to reveal things in advance before they air. So she said that she has a lot of tea to spill at the end of the season especially at the end of the reunion episodes airing but she said for her part all she's gonna do from now is just basically try to you know air out things that uh you know maybe didn't make sense in a scene and maybe things that she found out from the grapevine of what people were saying about her uh behind her back reiterated a few times that she exposes at the reunion that there's a blessing that came out of all of this so i'm not sure if she's confirming uh she's pregnant or not uh there were people still calling in saying that congratulations to her uh and then there was an interesting moment where she i uh, 
I guess somebody asked a question if Destiny was ever pregnant by Moses. And essentially, Sunny confirmed that there's a text message out there if, you know... Destiny took the plan B pill, allegedly, and said that I think originally she was going to try to show that text message and show that receipt. However, she said that this was a long time ago and um, it would take her a while to scroll. And so she's going to guess, I, I guess that's on her list to provide uh, receipts of on a future live. Basically wanted to, you know, reiterate some of the timelines and basically said that, you know, Destiny has has framed this as Sonny and Moses are trying to throw her marriage, throw their marriage in everybody's face. But she said, this is all Destiny's plan. Destiny's plan started with the Dear Future Wifey podcast of airing this out, talking about her ex-husband, LeBaric, even though she claims that she's not allowed to legally, but continues to, you know, make these claims. She said, um, Destiny has told her all of her business and not once had she ever said anything about the alleged ABUSE allegations um, and all of that. She said all of that was new information to her because that was nothing Thing that she ever revealed, even though she basically told everything uh, to Sunny, but basically said it was Destiny that went on the podcast tour and had, you know, told some lies about the timelines and the interactions with Moses. And basically, you know, because she reiterated to a few callers and content creators that, you know, the timelines of what Destiny is saying isn't matching, you know, the reality and that, you know, she doesn't understand how quickly the cast just is believing Destiny's lies. She said Moses was never, you know, wanting to film the show with Destiny, basically treated her this entire time like a side chick, uh, feels that Destiny is lying about, you know, her upbringing and, and being from all of these places and repping all these places. Like it just doesn't make sense with how Destiny has been moving. And so nonetheless, you know, she said, you, you, you're basically here. You're basically back on the show because of me and Moses. And I think somebody asked, you know, what is going to happen if you and Moses are not back, you know, on the show? What is Destiny going to talk about? And she said she doesn't know. I, I, I do. She's going to continue to show old receipts or, or talk about old things in regards to Mel and Martel. That, that'll be her focus then. Uh, but basically said it was just cringeworthy watching Destiny do all of this groveling and this fake apology in Mel's face, but behind her back was doing the same stuff that she did previously when, um, Sunny was her producer, which was talking bad about Mel behind her back. So I'm not sure who told Mel, but remember Mel did that TikTok live where essentially she said that she thought everything was good with her and Destiny after the girls trip. And um, I guess towards the end of the girls trip or at some point they had a moment off camera where she thought everything was hashed out. Although there was a weird moment where Mel thought Destiny was trying to record her because she could hear like the record button on the iPhone that takes place when you're trying to like, uh, you know, record somebody and record a conversation. And then basically Mel found out from whoever that the moment that Destiny touched back down in Huntsville, that she was going around the cast bashing Mel, saying all this, Mel this, Mel that. And it just showed that nothing that Destiny said that Mel could take seriously. So it just sounds like Destiny in, in her heart of hearts is, is a very mean girl. And basically Sunny said, and very two-faced, and Sunny basically said, that Destiny set up this whole, orchestrated this whole plan uh, for the cast not to like Sunny in that, like I said, starting with the Dear Future Wifey podcast. And then she said they started filming the season in January. She said the girls trip was around March. And then she said in May, of course, was when the show came back. And that was when she, um, that's when Destiny wanted to start her weekly recap show in May to continue to drive home 
some of the false narratives and false timelines in regards to her and uh, Moses to make it seem like her and Moses were more than it was. And Sunny said, you know, this was a situationship at best. She said this was a thing where whenever, you know, they wanted to link up as friends with benefits, whether they were involved with people or not, uh, that's how they kind of just fell into each other. I think also revealed a message where, uh, you know, Destiny was still sending pictures of uh, her son to Moses and he was just like, okay, cool. Like it was just, it, it just seemed like, you know, she was just really trying to elevate uh, this Moses thing and it just didn't sound anything more than a friends with benefits, an entanglement of sorts, a, hey, if, if we're in the same town and all of this, you know, let, let's hook up. Sunny allegedly said, you know, uh, from jump, you know, there, there wasn't this long friendship that Destiny's trying to portray, the same thing she's trying to portray with Martell, but that basically uh, Destiny, you know, hooked up with Moses right away. And then after that, since they had been hooking up for so long, had then developed a friendship. So um, it's just interesting, like, you know... Destiny gave us nothing her first time on the show, and now we know why. Because she was trying to orchestrate all of these alleged things behind people's backs, and the demise of her and Mel's friendship, you know, really just uh, turned that into high gear. And, you know, really that's when she just tried to be cool with everybody that either Mel had issues with or Mel had fallen out with and hopes, you know, in conjunction with Martell and whomever else that this would be ultimately what they needed to get Mel off the show or to have Mel ambushed and humiliated, embarrassed. And and thank goodness production, um, you know, said, hey, at least in one instance, that we're not going to have a double ambush of Mel already when we know the cast is intending to ambush Mel. Like, it was just a lot, you guys. And, um, but that was the gist of everything, I think, from the three and a half hours, uh, or, or nearly four hours from what I could remember of, you know, all of that. But nonetheless, I... I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I want to know if any of you guys tuned into any portion of this live. I want to know what your thoughts are on, on what was revealed. It just really was heavy about how conniving, allegedly, you know, Destiny is. And how much of a liar, apparently, Destiny is. And how obsessed with Mel that Destiny is. And if you were such a good friend to Mel, if you and Mel were as close as you said, like Sunny basically said, there's a lot of tea that she has on this cast, including Destiny, that she is spared, that she has not gone into details on because she feels she still has a caring heart. She still cares about these people. However, you know, Destiny keeps trying to push the envelope and keeps trying to push this slander and all these things. Oh, so it's time for my bedside Baptist for me to tune in, you guys. Um, so nonetheless, uh, she wanted to, you know, drive home that, you know, this is what went down. This is who Destiny really is. And, you know, but it's easy, like I said, if you can share a bond over mutually disliking somebody or mutually falling out with somebody, you know, they're going to believe anything you tell them. So, nonetheless, there is that. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I want to see what you guys have to say and all of the things um, because it was a lot. It was a lot that was going on, and I just wanted to give you kind of the overall synopsis of things, and um, and you guys can decide for yourself if, if you want to take some time today to, to listen to it as well uh, or not, and, um, and let me know what you guys think and what your interpretation of everything is. So there is that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post some content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.